Okay, let's see the consequences of auto peep on volume control mode. And I decided to separate volume control from pressure control to make it easy and clearer. And please make sure you watch my previous videos because I'm building on all the on all the information I mentioned. In volume control, the main difference between volume control and pressure control, which you know should know by now, is that we have a guaranteed tidal volume and minute ventilation with volume control. So Let's say the patient already has OTP problem. That means increase in the expiratory alveolar volume at the end of expiration. That means less space available for the new or next tidal volume. That means there's decrease in the compliance. There is no space for the new tidal volume. So the ability of alveoli to stretch and distend is less because of that, simply, as we expected, over distension and stretching, lung injury, inflammation, and volume trauma, which we'll talk about it shortly in the next uh, few videos. In that's the volume wise, pressure wise, because increase in volume that will lead to the increase in the expiratory alveolar pressure, which is the O2 peep itself. That means in volume control, we need higher proximal airway pressure to deliver set tidal volume because it has to create a higher gradient. Now the alveolar pressure at the end of expression is higher than the applied PEEP. That means if 20 needed initially, now we need 40 centimeters HTO, for example. So that will lead to increase in the peak inspiratory pressure. Just go back to my videos about peak inspiratory pressure. That simply will lead to increased plateau pressure. Simply, if you see decreased compliance, that means by default increase plateau pressure. Plateau pressure is the maximum alveolar pressure at the end of inspiration. And the increased plateau pressure will lead to barotrauma, which we'll talk about it in a separate video. Barotrauma or high pressure in the alveoli. Alveoli are fragile, cannot withstand the high pressure that will lead to pneumothorax rupture pneumomediastinum and subcutaneous emphysema. Now, how do we fix this issue in volume control? Simply to solve the O2P, there is one answer, is increase expiratory time. Whenever you face an increase O2P, O2P problem, gas trapping problem, just increase expiratory time, allow the alveoli to empty, allow, give them time to empty the excess air they have in. And because we talk about volume control, simply, you need to review, go back to videos of volume control and inspiratory time and see how do you decrease inspiratory time and prolong expiratory time by default. Because if you decrease inspiratory time, by default you increase expiratory time. We know the cycle that the inspiration in volume control terminate once you deliver this tidal volume. So if you decrease this tidal volume, that will lower the inspiratory time and increase expiratory time. The other way, this is flow Z liter per minute. Simply if you deliver, if you make the flow rate faster, that means you will deliver the set tidal volume faster. That means less inspiratory time. So increasing the flow rate and the slower the respiratory rate, the less time inspiration will spend in respiratory cycle. That means the more expiratory time, as we explained. Go just back to my videos about all of these. So decreasing respiratory rate. So by doing these things, you simply make or give more expiratory time in volume control and then Hopefully that will get rid of auto peep and allow full exhalation. Now, as you see, you may wonder, okay, if I'm using this in auto P, uh, sorry, on COPD, for example, yes, that may work. But all these here, decreasing tidal volume or decreasing respiratory rate, that will decrease minute ventilation and may worsen what? CO2 retention. or what we call hypercapnia. Let me tell you here, or introduce the permissive 
hypercapnia term is simply this is okay to allow some kind of hypercapnia to avoid autopeep consequences so that should be okay to a sum extent